All right, so I've got this really great oval stone here, which we'll do our mandala on today. And I've already painted a black, black background circle on it. Uh, I'm just gonna remeasure it to find my center again and do our center dot to start us off. All right. And this one is three inches. One and a half is going to be my center, and I'm just going to actually take one of my dotting tools and put a little scratch in it to find the center there. Okay, so I've collected all my materials. I have all my paints and my brushes, and I'm actually going to switch between brushes and dotting tools during this one just to show you the, the versatility, how you can use either to do these, so I have all my supplies here. All right, for the first center dot, I'm gonna be using the new metallic one I got, which is a white pearl from Deco Art. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it, gives it some shine, it's pretty awesome. And you can either use a larger, soft, round acrylic brush for this, or if you have a dotting tool that has a larger end on it, you can use that. I know some people are using a plethora of other things between ends of drill bits or ends of crochet hooks or ends of your paintbrushes. Whatever you have, you can use to do your center dot here. So I'm just going to use the, the dotting tool for now, and because I want the center circle a little bit bigger than this dotting tool allows. What I do is just kind of roll it around to make your circle a little bigger. Like that. Alright, and for the start of our mandala we want to just do like a plus sign. So we can do the bottom, the top, and side to side just like you were doing a cross or plus sign. And I'm using my dot um, angle spot detailer that I got from Princeton Brush Company. This thing is great. I love how it's angled. It makes it easier to see what you're doing when you're dotting, especially when you get into really, really fine detail work. I absolutely love this brush. Um, this one is a size 10. And it's... It's great. It's got great bristles, and it's great for doing the videos, too, because you can see around my hand when I'm working. Okay, so I don't usually use any patterns um, or stencils to do the mandalas. It's difficult on stone to, to get them to fit the stone well, so I just freehand it from the center out, and just kind of work your way around the mandala. And if you keep things kind of uniformly sized, then you'll keep your symmetry. And you don't have to use these colors, they just happen to be what I have an affinity for right now. Okay, and I'm still using the angled brush. I'm just tucking the dots in between each row that we just created. Okay, so I think I'm going to start adding in some of the new S curls and you can do them small, large, it's just going to change your mandala design a little bit so it doesn't matter either way just as long as you do it the same way all around. And I think for this one I'm actually, because the background's black, I think that I can just etch it into the stone, or the paint on the stone rather. And this one actually is just a backwards S. I'm going to take my camera down and show you close up here. Okay. 
I'm just taking this tool, which has a broken end off, actually. Or you could take a pencil, scratch it in, however you want to do it. And then you're just drawing it onto your background. Just work your way around the stone. Until you've done it all the way around. Let's try it from this angle too, so maybe you can see it a little better. Like I said, I'm scratching it in with this tool, but you could also use a sharp pencil, mechanical pencil, whatever you have on hand. And then just start at the top. And curl it down around the bottom. Like that. Okay, so you can also double check just to make sure that they're similar in height by going around to the end of each of your S curls and measuring it out to the outer edge of your background just to make sure that you kind of have them all uniform in size. Uh, my awesome husband with his engineering mind is always coming up with suggestions for me <laughs> to show me how to do stuff easier or try to help me out with things for these especially with spacing if I'm just stuck on how to space something he has lots of ways of checking it so he also suggested a compass um, which I have one here that you can set to the size on your stone how the distance from the center to the end of your S and you can make a circle around that area and then do your S's up to your circle. So that would give you a better range of where you're putting the design in. So you can see here, I don't want to stick it in here because my paint is still wet, but if I centered the compass here with the point and then traced around, you could even do this before you make your S's, trace around another circle, so this would be like an inner circle here, then you could just make your S's go up to that line that you just created. So now you just choose the color that you want to make your S curls. I think I'm gonna do mine in a blue, darker blue. And you can use the dotting tools or a smaller brush like a liner brush or the angled brush that I just showed um, I'll do this with a dotting tool so you can see and you're just gonna follow your lines that you traced or trace the lines that you drew I don't know about the rest of you, but I tend to hold my breath, especially when I'm doing the smaller dots. So forgive the silence. It's just concentrating. And you just work your way around to do all of the S's that you created. And it puts some space and depth in the design and a little added feature rather than always just cramming in dots after dots after dots. Um, it gives it a little different direction to go in and just creates a different mandala design. Which they are so fun, aren't they? So relaxing. It's so therapeutic, I think, to just do this calming dotting. Maybe it's not for everyone. Some people say they don't have the patience to do it, but I think once you get going with it, it really just is so enjoyable.
One thing that I've learned too, after all these years of painting, is you know, keep in the back of your mind if you don't like the way something's coming out, especially with this, if you have a background, it's really easy to just let it dry and paint black over it. A lot of people want to wash the stones and use alcohol, but if you have a background, you don't have to do that. You can just paint black right over it, or if it's only the S curls that didn't come out right, you could take your black and go right over it again. So don't lose heart. Plus, it takes a lot of practice. You'll get used to it. So if you're not 100% enamored with the creation you've come up with, then just do another one. That's a great thing about rocks, is most of the time they're free canvas. I know some of you are landlocked and have to buy them. And others are blessed with amazing, amazing smooth stones that they get from the ocean near where they live. And see here I'm talking about mistakes and this one I actually put these two angled this one's angled the wrong way I did it the same as this one so what I'm gonna do is let it dry and then paint it over black and re-angle it so that it's in line with the one above it instead of the same as that. Just because it helps with the design, but these are all things that you learn along the way. Okay. This might still be a little bit wet, but as I said, this one wasn't working out for me. So, I'm just gonna kind of, with a damp brush, brush off what I can of the one that was angled incorrectly. And then like I said, because this has a background, very, very easy to just go back over it with the black or whatever color background you're using, you can do this with. And just tuck the black in there. And it's as easy as that on. So we'll let that dry and then I'll re-angle it so that it's in the right alignment. Okay, so I'm just going back over that black spot that I created by erasing the other one. And I actually didn't draw my S in. I'm just doing it freehand for now. But you get the idea, once you get used to doing a design, you can just kind of, with muscle memory, <laughs> go back in and do it. Here. So, as you can see, there's lots of different things that you can do around your S. This one I did kind of like a flower petal type out all around it. On this canvas, um, I didn't do anything directly around it. I just pushed it up a little higher, put another dot, and then did more designs up that far. Same with this little guy. I did the S curl, and then just pushed the design up a little higher and filled in around it. But you can see this one also has little ones at the beginning, and then a larger one towards the end of the design. And I started doing these a while ago, so this one has them on the outer edge, just as a little flare to the end of your mandala. So what shall we do for this little guy? 